got the hairy microphone here. It's just gonna have to be hairy, I guess. All right, Asadi. What's going on, everybody? My name is Frank Davalos, and today we're talking about the Leica M9 and why I actually think it's the perfect digital camera for a film shooter. For a fucking film shooter, bit. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna try and keep this video a little bit shorter than most of my other videos because there's not much to talk about. This is not a review. I just wanna talk about a few features about the Leica M9 that I think make it a really good sort of transitional camera for a film shooter, somebody coming from 35 millimeter, et cetera. I know for me, I really kind of wrestled with myself back and forth, whether or not to get the M10 or the M9. And I think what ultimately uh, led me to my decision was sort of the fact that this felt to me like it would be a lot more similar to a 35 millimeter film camera. Um, and there's a few reasons why that is. And so I'm gonna go over them really quick right now. Number one, the Kodak CCD sensor. It's beautiful. What else is there to say about it? When Leica was developing this sensor, they kind of mimicked Kodachrome film, which is a really famous film stock from back in the day. Uh, some of your favorite photographers like Steve McCurry, they all used Kodachrome. It's kind of famous for like its contrast and uh, its punchy colors and things like that. And so this is sort of designed, modeled off of that. And I think that it's really, really beautiful. Like definitely the skin tones are a little bit orange and the greens are a little bit green, but uh, the CCD sensor really gives it a vibe. And I think that's what you kind of go after when you're shooting film is the vibe of whatever film stock you're shooting. Outside of that, the CCD sensor, it really just is beautiful and kind of timeless. And I think that's why uh, a 13 year old camera can still sort of make beautiful images in 2022. Okay, so that's a CCD sensor. Number two, I think the ISO limitations of this camera really remind me of, you know, shooting film because with film, you're either getting 400 speed film and pushing it to 1600. I know you can get 3200, but it's super grainy. Um, and you're getting the same sort of uh, experience with the Leica M9. You can really only shoot this camera up to ISO 1600. Um, anything more, you're going to introduce all kinds of noise. Honestly, even at ISO 1600, uh, there's going to be some noise. But I think that uh, that's kind of almost what I like about this camera is that when I'm switching between my MP and my M9, I'm just like, it's very familiar. Even when I first bought this camera, I was I would always go to wind it because it's such a familiar feeling to the Leica MP. Um, and I think that the ISO limitations really sort of lend itself really well to film photographers who are used to shooting at that uh, those ISOs anyways. For me, the ISO limitations, I mean, I guess sometimes it would be nice to be able to shoot at like 6,400, but those times are very few and far between for, for me and what I shoot. And once you kind of get some of those faster lenses, um, you really realize that you can shoot pretty much almost everything at ISO 1600 or lower. And I think that also the noise pattern, it's such a random noise pattern that it almost looks like film grain when there is noise. I think that film shooters really wouldn't be missing much in terms of low light capabilities. It doesn't have like the mode that new cameras have where it has like a dynamic range mode where you can flick it to auto. And if the scene's super contrasty, it'll automatically boost the shadows for you. This camera, because it's so old, it's 13 years old, doesn't really have that feature, at least not to my knowledge. It might, for JPEG shooting, you can't really get away with like a backlit situation without blowing out either the highlights or the shadows will be super dark of, on your subject. So that's just a point, I guess that I wanted to bring up while we're talking about this. The other thing that I think is awesome about this camera that a lot of people shooting film would probably appreciate is just the old sound of the shutter. Um, I'll see if I can get a, let's see. It just sounds like a, I don't know. It just reminds you of old times. Just hearing that shutter and then hearing kind of almost like a rewind, like a film rewind sound. Uh, it just really feels like you're shooting film. The third thing that I would say about this camera that would make a film shooter love it is actually the back screen. You know, a lot of people on YouTube shit on the back screen, but 
But for me personally, I think it's like the perfect blend of being able to see what you need to see, but not being sort of uh, pulled into using the LCD screen all the time. And it makes for a really fun shooting experience. You can just focus on composing the image. Uh, the odd time I will check sort of my exposure, um, but I just keep the screen off. And if I need to check my exposure, I'll check it quick. Very few times I'll zoom in and check to see if uh, everything's sharp, which you can do. A lot of people shit on the screen. It's not as bad as they say, but it's definitely not good. And I think it's like the perfect in-between of being somewhat useful, but not so useful that you're relying on it. So I think film shooters would actually love that about the M9. It has the bottom plate and it, it, at first I was like, why would they do that? Like, it seems kind of stupid, but I actually really like doing it now for some reason. Whenever I need to change the battery, take the bottom plate off, put the battery in, put the SD card in. That kind of goes into my second point about this. The SD card, 18 megapixels is actually such a good, useful image. And most of our film scans that we get back, you know, they're around that ballpark at the best for the most part. When I, you know, I'm using my mirrorless setup scanning film, I'm getting anywhere from like 18 to like 24 megapixels or something like that when I'm scanning. Sometimes way less. Um, and with scanners and stuff, you know, it's definitely less. I know with my Epson, it's like eight meg megapixels or something like that. I can't really remember, but it's not that good. The thing that I love about 18 megapixels is that it's such a small file. And so I shoot raw and JPEG and I have a 16 gigabyte card on this and you have to get an old card. You can't get a new card for these and shooting raw and JPEG. It gives me around like 700 images or something like that. And that's crazy to me, you know, like my Leica Q2 monochrome would fill up in like, you know, less than a hundred pictures probably, uh, on a 16 gigabyte card. So I actually really love that. It's like fun working with such light files. Obviously they contain less information. Obviously they're probably not as crazy as like, you know, like an M11 or a Canon R5 or something like that, obviously. But it's actually like the perfect sort of in between of, you know, film, we don't get that much uh, resolution on our scans. And it's the same with this M9, but it's more than enough for printing. It's more than enough for what you need. I promise you, it's certainly more than enough to share your images on screen. So for me, that's uh, those are some of the things I love about it. And I'll just finish off by saying a couple more things about this camera. The JPEGs out of this thing, especially the black and white JPEGs, I like adore. These black and whites are so beautiful. Uh, I would be super interested to check out a Leica M, basically the M9 monochrome sensor version. Uh, I bet those files would look super beautiful because the black and whites out of this thing look amazing. And especially when you kind of push it a bit, it does look like film grain and it really gives a filmic vibe. And I just, yeah, I don't know how many times I can say vibe in this video, but you can get the shutter speed to one over 4,000, which is actually, you know, a benefit. It says aperture priority, which is also an added benefit. So there are some useful digital features about this camera, but there are quite a few limitations that really make this like the perfect transition camera. And finally, the thing that I think really brings this camera home to the film era is the fact that it doesn't have Bluetooth. You actually have to wait. It does have a USB port here that you can use to transfer images between uh, your camera and the computer, but I'll probably never use that. I think it's like an old, like, I don't know if it's a USB-A or what it is, but it really does feel like you're shooting film and you still get that giddy excitement at the end of the day or, you know, I took this camera to the lake and we were gone a whole weekend and I didn't have my computer with me. I couldn't get the images off until I was at my computer. And so when I got home, I was like super excited the same way I am when I get film. And uh, I think that there's something to be said about that. A camera that like forces you to slow down and not make everything all about instant gratification. Um, and this is a little bit more instant than film. These are kind of expensive. I got the M9P for $4,200 Canadian. So something like uh, $3,500 American for an M9P. Uh, maybe a bit less. I'm sure you could find a deal too. This one was in perfect shape. It is expensive, but if you're interested in getting into Leica and you have the budget to spend and you're also tossing up over an M10 and an M9, I would actually recommend that you get the M9 first and see how you like it. Getting this camera actually solidified me not wanting an M10. I don't love CMOS sensors, which is why it's so weird how much I love the Leica Q2M. I really think that this is like the perfect in-between. And for me, it's a really great... Uh, 
compromise. You know, I didn't have to spend six to seven grand Canadian on the M10. Uh, I still get a digital Leica. I can use all my Leica lenses on it, except for my 50 millimeter uh, Summicron dual range. That one, unfortunately, doesn't work. If you're trying to get into Leica, you have the budget to spend. I would say start with this. If you don't like it, you still have uh, an itch for the M10. You can always sell this and you'll get pretty much the same or more money back. I'm really happy with it. I love working with the files and it's a beautiful, like some of the images are so pretty and it's such a fun camera to bring around. And, uh, and I'm not you know, super worried about it in the way that I would be if I had the like M11 or something like that. Um, but everybody's situation is different. And I just hope you got a little bit out of this video if you're a film shooter and you're trying to get into Leica and you're also on the sort of tipping point of these film prices and it being super expensive to shoot film, um, getting something that might be a good experience that's digital is kind of hard, you know? And so the Leica M9, I think, is it at least for me that's my thoughts on why i think the leica m9 would be the perfect camera for a film shooter this isn't a full review obviously as i mentioned at the top i don't think i'm quite ready for that i think i want to spend some more time with this camera uh get to know it a little bit better so i can really sort of determine what my quirks are etc what my quirks are <laughs> there's so much its quirks are i just think this is such a great camera so so fun Maybe a little bit overpriced at the moment, but isn't everything overpriced at the moment? I really feel like everything's overpriced at the moment. That's it. That's all for this video. Uh, I just want to say quickly, thank you all so much for those who have subscribed and uh, have been watching sort of, I think I have like five or six videos now uh, over the span of like almost two years. And it's kind of crazy seeing all of the people that are subbing and, and watching my videos. I definitely didn't expect it and I really appreciate the feedback some of it has been super helpful and uh, it's been fun chatting with you guys in the comments so if you do have a question about this camera be sure to drop it down below in the comments um, and we can talk a little bit more about it uh, but for now that's it thank you guys so much again for watching thank you for your time as always and uh, we'll see you in the next video